All right, so I got something a little bit different today, but I'm really excited about it, so here we go. Trek just released the new Slash, and oh boy, it's a lot. I've owned all but the fourth generation Slash. This bike has evolved from 26 inch wheels to 27 and a half to 29 inch wheels, and now it's a mullet. Who would have thought? The last generation Slash was a great bike, but due to supply chain issues, COVID, all that stuff, when it finally reached customers' hands, it was a little off the back. So what else changed? Well, first they addressed those glaring issues like the seat tube angle. It's now more than 77 degrees. For most sizes, the head tube angle is also 63.5 degrees. And it now has size-specific chainstays. However, Trek didn't stop there, and it looks like they were hoping to stay ahead this time. Throughout its life, the Slash has had 160 millimeters of rear wheel travel. That's now bumped up to 170 millimeters of high pivot ABP goodness. You can even run a 190 millimeter fork. Similar to the new Fuel EX, there are headset cups to change the head angle a full degree plus or minus, depending on your preference. The hardware also resembles that on the new EX, which should make for easier maintenance and increased durability. There is a lower bolt on the shock mount that allows you to run the bike dual 29 if that's more your style and due to the flip chip for the leverage rate you can finally run a coil without compromise other small details include better seat post insertion so you may be able to run a longer dropper a bit more frame protection and noise reduction on the chainstays and 200 millimeter direct post mount for the rear brake i mentioned this in the gen 5 review that it didn't make sense to spec a 180 rotor on a bike like this so it's good that that's no longer an option I am also happy you still get the awesome in-frame storage and there isn't any weird in-head tube cable routing. Altogether, if you can get your hands on it and you have the cash, then this should be a bike that really delivers. After living with my Trek session, review coming soon, I'm very interested in how this bike pedals. The drag from the pulley is noticeable, especially the noise. I want to see what the two larger pulleys do for the bike, not to mention whatever other magic they may have worked to make this bike pedal like a champ. On the downhill though, I'm really becoming a believer in the high pivot. You can really feel it. My next bike is gonna be a mullet for sure with similar travel, so maybe it could be a high pivot as well. This is definitely one I'd love to demo. Nice one! Yeah. Now let's talk about the thing that's not so great. Now price, this is where things hurt. With all the direct to consumer competition and Trek owning so many of their retailers, it would be Cool to see the bikes more similarly priced, but let's see what we got. The Entry 8 doesn't seem too bad at 4400 bucks, but then you realize this one only has a 36. I do like that they reintroduced a high-end-ish alloy bike, but unfortunately I think they missed. I'd rather have some nice suspension and brakes, but they opted for the higher-end drivetrain. So you do get a transmission, the GX transmission on this bike, but that pushes the price up to 5800 From here you get into the carbon bikes, and the colors look good. The 9.8 XT runs you 7400 GX transmission, eight grand. Finally, if you have all the cash to burn, you can't go wrong with the 9.9 .9 models. The XO is at 9400 and the XTR at 9600 XX at 11500 This is a really cool bike, but it's not going to be cheap. If you want to check one out, it looks like a few stores already have these on their floors. I think Trek's got a winner on their hands. We'll have to keep an eye out on the Enduro World Cup and see how things go. I've got a bunch of great bike reviews coming, so please like and subscribe.